Hey everyone. Someone recently gave me this little handheld breathalyzer, and so I thought we'd uh, take it apart today and see what makes it work, and then later I'll build my own breathalyzer. So uh, it's got one button here and a display and a port that you breathe into, and I'm going to press the button, and it beeps and it has this little countdown routine, and we'll talk about that in a minute. What it's actually doing is warming up the sensor, physically warming it up. And when the countdown gets uh, down to zero, it beeps to tell you to start blowing. And I'm going to blow into the tube. And then it beeps and it says zero, since I haven't had anything to drink. If we press the button and have it start its countdown routine and then don't blow into it, the machine knows that you aren't actually blowing into it and will say something like FL for fail on the display. Okay, let's take it apart. Okay, here it is with the cover taken off. Here's the port where you blow in, and this little piece of plastic has uh, an exit here, and so when you breathe into it, your breath travels here to the sensor here, and then you can see there's a couple of vents that go to the outside. So it doesn't actually force your breath through the sensor, it really just passes it across the sensor here, and most of it escapes the chamber through that vent in the back. That's what it looks like on the back there. Um, if we look at the front of the board, of course it's got the display there. Uh, it's got a pot over here for presumably calibrating it, or setting something at the factory. It's got a pretty good sized diode and inductor here, and it's got a 5 lead uh, SMD package here which probably makes a boost converter. Uh, this thing runs off of a single AAA battery and when we flip the board over you'll see there's some components that definitely require more voltage than one and a half volts. So we've got a little microcontroller there, a bunch of passives and some transistors. The microcontroller is a Holtec HT46R065 and I looked that up and it's your basic 8-bit MCU with integrated AD and it also has an integrated display controller for LCDs. I don't know if they sort of modified that to work with the LEDs or uh, if it could power both or what, but um, there's that. And then this is just the piezo beeper. The wire is going to the beeper on the back. So a pretty simple circuit. It's kind of amazing how a lot of modern electronics get boiled down to the same battery power supply, microcontroller, and user output type stuff. I searched around a little bit for alcohol sensors and found that the market is dominated by uh, a specific uh, line of sensors made by the same company. This particular sensor is most likely an MQ303A, and we can see that it's a three terminal device, and two of the terminals are for the heater, and the third terminal is the signal. And basically it's just a variable resistor that changes resistance based on the concentration of alcohol vapor blowing across it. The data sheet indicates that the sensor requires 0.9 volts for the heater and that it takes several minutes to come to equilibrium so that you can actually start measuring. But in a product like this it wouldn't really work to wait a few minutes for this to warm up. And I think the manufacturer realized that so the data sheet says that you can also give it 2 volts for about 10 to 15 seconds and then back down to 0.9 volts and that will ensure that the thing is hot enough. Uh, and, that's, and that's what they're doing here and that's why it has that 15 second time down when you uh, start the device. I did a little bit more searching about these alcohol sensors and they're apparently made with tin dioxide. So the heater heats up this ceramic pellet that's coated in tin dioxide and then the sense resistor basically goes through the tin dioxide to the heater. Uh, the heater is relatively low resistance. The thing burns about 100 milliwatts when it's heating. And um, the, uh, you know, so the resistance from that third lead through the tin dioxide to the heater is, is relatively high. So it doesn't really matter which pin you use uh, as the other side of the sense circuit. Here's a slightly larger sensor that I bought from SparkFun a while ago. And this one is called the uh, MQ3, uh, presumably made by the same company. 
and I'll hold it up to the light so you can see the sensor element inside. And the way it's built is it has this ceramic tube that's covered in the tin dioxide. So how does this stuff actually work? It's a little tough to find a decent explanation, but I think it works like this. When an incoming ethanol molecule lands on the surface of the tin dioxide, it uh, reacts with oxygen that's also just hanging around in the area. And since it's hot in there, you know, it's this heater heating the whole thing up, uh, the ethanol will uh, burn, you know, react with the oxygen and uh, leave water and CO2 there. So the trick is that when you pull oxygen that's out of the tin dioxide, its uh, conductance will change, and thus the resistance of that whole thing will change. And this isn't actually pulling oxygen out of the lattice. It's not like it's converting it from tin dioxide back to tin. I think it's just pulling out oxygen atoms that happen to be hanging around, uh, adsorbed oxygen. And so the more ethanol that comes in, the more of that oxygen gets pulled away. So that may make you uh, think that the oxygen concentration of the gas coming in is important, and it certainly is. The data sheet shows that the oxygen concentration is very critical into the performance of this thing, and they've been calibrated for atmospheric air, you know, about 20% oxygen. If you blow higher concentrations of oxygen at it, it will not read correctly, in addition to lower concentrations. It's also, you know, temperature and humidity sensitive, and those variables have been tried to uh, been, a, you know, calibrated for um, breath, so relatively high humidity and temperature of 20-something or 30 C. Here's a chart that shows your estimated blood alcohol concentration as a function of time. And so we're assuming the chart says one, two, three, or four drinks, and so these are all consumed at once at time zero. And it does take some time for the body to absorb the alcohol, and then it's metabolized at a relatively constant rate, which is why these uh, uh, descending lines are fairly linear. This table shows the correlation between blood alcohol concentration as a percent volume and PPM of alcohol in the exhaled breath. And so I think this has to be determined empirically. Basically, this depends on how permeable the membranes are in the lungs and how likely it is that the uh, ethanol molecules will transfer back into the air. The alcohol sensor in the little handheld breathalyzer is specially set up to measure alcohol concentrations in this range. It was basically made specifically to be a breathalyzer sensor. This chart shows the output of the sensor in terms of resistance divided by its nominal resistance as a function of concentration of alcohol in ppm. You can see they also give curves for uh, butane and hydrogen here too, so the sensor will sense other gases. It just happens to be that you don't exhale much butane or hydrogen. Uh, if you have been drinking, pretty much the only thing coming out of you is uh, water and ethanol and CO2. You can see the concentration here in sort of the mid-scale range is from 10 to 1,000, which covers the ranges that you'll likely encounter in exhaled breath. So to test this out, I drank one and a half ounces of vodka exactly 20 minutes ago, and so my blood alcohol content should be at that peak that we saw on the graph, so let's uh, try it out. it shows a 0.01% blood alcohol concentration. Uh, just for reference, I weigh like about 150 something pounds. Here's a lash up of that other sensor. This one has a much higher power consumption. It's almost uh, seven or 800 milliwatts, just about. It's a five volt heater. And I've got it set up with the heater running continuously and the meter monitoring the sense uh, resistance. And so I'm gonna blow into this tube again and direct some of my breath into the sensor here. You can see a pretty marked decrease in the sense resistance, and then it starts heading back up when I stop breathing on it. One interesting thing is that that little handheld breathalyzer knows when you are breathing into it, so it must be using either the change in resistance of the heater itself or the change in resistance of the sense resistor to figure out if there's actually breath moving across the sensor. I suspect some of those transistors in there are a constant current source for the heater, and it knows that if it has to start dumping more uh, current, or I mean, if the voltage has to go up, then the power consumption in the heater must be going up to maintain that current. I'm not really sure about that, but I, I think there is a, uh, there must be a sense in there that to determine if you're blowing enough air across it. Okay, check the description for links to all this stuff. See you next time. Bye.